Okay, welcome back folks. Uh, this video tutorial is going to talk about pivot tables. And pivot tables are a very powerful piece of uh, kit that is built into Excel. A uh, wonderful tool that uh, is really, really useful for doing summary statistics and analysis in Excel. Uh, things that you would do by hand. It could really automate a lot of the um, sort of sorting and collating and combining of data. So I'm going to just introduce you to it really quickly and then we're going to have a couple other videos on how to use VBA to control pivot tables. So I have here uh, a very large data sample of some airline data. Uh, this is airline data that's uh, available uh, from a government website um, and you can get that in the documentation for the video at the end. And what it has is it has an ID here for a flight. It has the year of the flight, quarter, month, day, uh, the flight date, the unique carrier, so that's like American Airlines, U.S., a flight number, uh, the origin airport ID, which is not that helpful, origin airport sequence ID, blah, blah, blah. The origin is really the airport code we're used to. Here's the uh, city and state, and then here's the destination. Um, and then there's a couple of interesting codes here. You have the departure time, uh, departure delay new. This is the minutes that it was delayed, so zero indicates that it uh, either left early or left on time. And this code here, departure delay 15, is a zero or a one. So if it's a one, it was a delay. If it's a zero, it wasn't considered a delay. So like I guess this is a four minutes, wasn't technically considered a, del a delay. And then you have the same thing on the arrival side, and you have a cancellation code. So um, as you can see here, there's I don't know, 152,000 of these records, and these are only for three airports, so it's a very large data set. And, you know, navigating this and pulling out data, like maybe I want to pull out, say I want to figure out, okay, by airline, who has sort of the, the worst record in terms of, of uh, delays, or maybe by airport, which airport is the most notorious for the delays. So you can imagine that would be, you know, I could probably do that with a sum if or a count if and do some comparisons and make my own table, and that would take a lot of time or we can use a pivot table. So the pivot table is I'm going to go ahead and select all my data. So that was some hotkey action there. So this is a control shift right arrow and a control shift end gets me down uh, to the bottom rather quickly. And then I go up to insert. I hit pivot table. It asks me some information about the range. You know, so if you didn't want to select your data, you can type in the data here. So that's one way if you don't know the hotkeys and you have this large data set, you can insert manually specify the range and you could tell it where you want it to go, either new worksheet or existing worksheet. I'm going to select a new worksheet. So I hit OK, and now I have my new worksheet. So over here is the pivot table itself. It's not populated yet. And over here is really the pivot table field list. This is really where you configure your pivot table. Um, so the way you do this is you first have to define sort of the axes of the pivot table. What do you want for the row headers and what do you want for the column headers? So in this particular case, we're going to look at, um, you know, by airport it, across the top. We want to figure out sort of the flight information. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my departure airport. So that is my um, origin code. So my origin code, I'm going to pop it across as my column labels. And you see when I do that, I have EWR for Newark, JFK, and LaGuardia. Okay, and then down my columns, I'm going to put my airline uh, flight carriers. So I put unique characters, carriers on my row. So now I have a table that has across the top the departure airports, and down the rows it has the um, airlines. So this is an empty table. It's not that, inter not that interesting yet. So this values box here. This is where we need to tell the table what we want to put in the cells of the table. So we have some empty cells here. That's what this box is asking for here is what do you want to put in those cells. So in this case I just want to count the number of um, just the number of flights right now. Let's just figure out what the volume is. So I go up here to ID and I know that each flight is unique. So I know that each of these numbers is a unique ID here. So if I just count the number of IDs, I'll get the number of like flights. So I grab my flight ID, I drag it here, and I get sum, which is not quite what I want. That's some pretty big numbers there. What I want is a count. So I have to go in here and change this. So Excel provides a lot of information under value field settings. It says, what do you want to put in the cell? Do you want the sum? Do you want the count? you want the average, the min, max? Well, I want the count. I want just the raw count of the number of entries. 
So now what I have in the table is a raw count of the number of flights uh, by airline that originated from each of these three airports. Um, and that's a basic pivot table right there. Okay, so what we'd like to do now is look at the sort of count of late departures that we had from each aircraft. So this is total, which is kind of cool, but we want to look at the you know how many of these flights were actually late out of the gate so I go back to my raw information you'll notice that over here under this DEP DEL 15 so this DEP departure delay 15 that means uh, actually I think that code is it was over 15 minutes late so we want to we're gonna go ahead and count those so I go back over here I need to do something with that code one way I could do that is just get rid of my count here count of total flights and I just go ahead and count up the total number of delays that would uh, pretty much give me what I want so this is my count of departure delays and you can see um, okay these are the number of delays so at first glance it looks like you know it looks like LaGuardia is pretty up there uh, and, and under Newark uh, but the problem is this isn't adjusted for volume. This is just raw number of delays. It would be nice if, the, if we could sort of look at this by volume and figure out, um, you know, which is like the highest percentage of delay. So there's a couple of different ways we could do that. We could take advantage of the fact that this is a, you know, sort of Boolean value. So it's 0 or 1. So if we just took the average of this value, we would sort of have by default um, the the average percent of delays and that's just because of the way that it's like a Bernoulli uh, random variable so if I just change this to average I would get sort of the average number of delays you can see now now Newark is clearly higher than LGA um, so you know 25 percent of the flights coming out of Newark are delayed by at least 15 minutes were coming out of LGA it's only 11 percent so coming out of LaGuardia not so much um, but if you're not entirely convinced of how we did that I mean we just took advantage of the fact that you see there is zero meaning it's on time or one um, so by just taking the average of that very of that flag we get implicitly the average percent that were delayed but let's go ahead and kinda calculate it a different way so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this back up and this time I'm going to um, I'm going to pull down into my header column. I sort of now have stacked over here under my uh, column headers the departure delay. So under each aircraft I have a zero or one. So Newark I have zero and one. So this is the number that we're you know on time out of Newark in the one. Uh, and then in my values here, I'm going to go ahead and drop back in my ID, and I'm going to count those. And now I have for Newark, I have the number that, you know, for American Airlines, I have the number that were, uh, you know, departed on time. And these are the number that departed le over 15 minutes late. And I have these blanks in there. So have sort of the same information. Uh, but I have a little bit more detail. So if I wanted to get the percentages, I could, you know, work that math out down here at the bottom. Now, a couple other things you could do with pivot tables that are that is interesting. Uh, maybe I don't want to see all these airlines. I just want to, you know, just want to see a couple of the ones that are important to me. So I can go up here to carrier, and I can drag that under report filter. And now I have sort of everything filtered. So you notice up here how unique carrier appeared at the top left. I can go under here and I can select multiple items. And I can just select American Airlines, maybe Delta, and maybe I'm going to look at US Air. Now when I do that, I sort of have a count uh, of just these aircraft, um, what ones are used. Another way I could do that is if I drag my unique carrier down here, I could filter just like that. So here the filters sort of built into the column header or the row header. So now on the ro each of the rows I have um, just the airlines I'm interested in.
Okay, a couple other things about uh, pivot tables here uh, that I'll show you is uh, maybe we're going to look at I'll put my carrier in the row and it's filtered right now. I'll select all my carriers and then across the top I'm going to put my origin and then maybe I'm going to put my departure delay indicator average here and now I'm only maybe interested in three of the airlines so I select American, Delta, and U.S. And I can see that U.S. Air has the best sort of uh, delay time. And um, you know, maybe now I want to start looking at some more sophisticated information to figure out well, where are the biggest delays in terms of the destinations. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the destination in under rows. So now I've got for each airline and each departure, I've got all the destinations. And maybe, okay, maybe I'm only interested in a couple places I fly, like maybe Boston, um, Orlando, and San Francisco. So I can go under here. And here's my unique carrier. You'll notice that I can select another because now I have two of these stacked. So under my row labels, I've got unique carrier and destination. I can actually go ahead and filter by both. So I'm going to go to destination. I'm going to select um, maybe Boston and Orlando and maybe San Francisco. And now I have a, a smaller kind of concise table. So there's a lot of really powerful things you could do with pivoting a uh, pivot table. And the best way to get uh, experience is just to put some data, like a large data set like this, in and just start experimenting. Um, you know, under options, you can do things. Um, you can change the source data after the fact. So if you move your data, you can change it here by uh, selecting you know source data and changing it. You can also move the pivot table. You can uh, select it and copy it. You can make pivot charts that uh, deal with your um, pivot table. that show sort of, you know, a breakdown of the of the data. You can also go in under the design and do things, you know, uh, make, that make the pivot table more readable. Uh, you can change the layout, a lot of things. Uh, one of the interesting you could do is a calculated field. So let me go ahead and undo this real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the carriers. Um, so this is all the carriers, and I've got maybe an average. So here I'm going to go back to my count of the uh, delays that are over 15 minutes. So now I have a count of the total number, and maybe I'm going to get rid of count. Let's go ahead and let's work with the actual delay time. So this is the departure delay in minutes. Um, so this should be a sum. So this is the sum of the minutes uh, that flights were delayed coming out. And let's say I want to calculate how much this is going to sort of cost, uh, you know, the United States of America, or, you know, the average American, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and use what's called a calculated field. So up under fields and data, you can do a calculated field, and you can make up your own field. So you can say maybe cost. So we're going to say that the cost is going to be $40 an hour. Um, so we need to do $40 times an hour, but of course we've got to pull down the uh, departure delay in minutes. So this is $40 an hour times this is now in minutes. So I've got to convert minutes um, to hours. So I just multiply, divide this by 60, and I get hours. So if I take $40 um, and times it by the average 
delay in minutes and divide by 60 minutes, I can get you know sort of the average delay in hours uh, times forty dollars an hour. And that will give me the price that it's costing you know the United States or you know the average person, if you will. Cost of delay. So I made my own field now. So now I've got cost of delay. You'll notice it shows up as a um, field here. So it's now a field in my uh, pivot table field list. So I can go ahead and get rid of this and maybe just put cost of delay here. And I'll do a sum of my cost of delay. Um, now it would be nice if I can change the units on this. So I can go number format and change it to currency. So now I've got the, sort of the cost of delay for my for my period of my, of my data. And you can see kind of which airline paid the most in, in fees uh, for uh, this period of time. So that's how calculated fields work. So it's a really handy way to, you know, if you find yourself using a pivot table and copying and pasting and then using the data from the pivot table, it's sometimes faster to just make up your own field and do your analysis that way. Um, so that's pretty much your introduction to pivot tables. There's a lot you can do with pivot tables, uh, but I think that's a good starting point for where we need to be.